Hey everybody, today I want to talk about a slightly controversial topic. Today I want to talk about Led Zeppelin's 2014 vinyl remasters. Um, recently I've been getting quite a lot of questions about these. Uh, people asking me if they're worth picking up, uh, what do I think of these, how do I compare these to some of the uh, vintage pressings I have maybe in my collection. So I wanted to make this video and talk about each one of these uh, different pressings. And uh, I bought some of these when they first came out uh, in, around 2014 and 2015. I think they went all the way up until like 2017, I believe, um, around that time period. Uh, and I had most of them, but recently, about I think three or four months ago, I completed the whole run. So I have Les Up and One all the way to Coda. Now, of course, for each one of these, they released um, super deluxe versions, like box set versions. I don't know the exact name of those box sets, uh, but these are not those, of course. These are just the standard issued uh, vinyl remasters. So I'm gonna go album by album and give you my thoughts on these. Uh, and to start with, let's give a little backstory. So these were um, remastered from the original master tapes by Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page was in charge of this whole project. A lot of people um, are were not that happy about that because he's done this before he's remastered the albums to uh, similar mixed reviews. Um, so I think a lot of people were kind of hoping that he would maybe hand this over to somebody else who could oversee the project and maybe do this in a different way. So right off the bat, one thing I should state is these were, they were taken from the original master tapes, which is good, but then they were um, pressed from a, a digital source. So they were digitally remastered, which is a bit of a letdown because Led Zeppelin um, are arguably the most famous band from the 1970s. The music that came out in the 1970s, the way it was created, the way it was pressed, a lot of people think is some of the best stuff out there. I am also one of those. Um, some of the Led Zeppelin albums that were pressed in the 1970s are just absolutely phenomenal. And those are, of course, all analog because that's what it was back then. Um, so to put these out digitally and to use a digital source to press them to vinyl, slightly controversial. Now, that doesn't mean they, they don't sound good or that they can't sound good because, of course, they, they can. Um, but let's really, really get into these now and start with the very first record, which is... Led Zeppelin 1. Uh, always have liked that cover, of course. There's the back. And I will show you what these look like. Because why not? Get the Atlantic label. Now, Led Zeppelin 1. Um, one of my all-time favorite albums. Arguably one of the best debut albums ever by anyone. Um, this... 2014 um, remaster. It's good and it's not so good. That's how I describe it. Uh, some of the songs on here are very, very nice. Um, and some of them on here are a little bit weird. At times on my particular pressing, there is a bit of distortion in the high end. It can be a little bit like overblown is how I would describe it. Um, almost like it's... Uh, it's, it's distorting, it's, it's how, is the exact how, how, way I would describe it. Um, the low end is a little bit maybe bloated, a little overdone, um, but then there are times where there are certain songs where like, uh, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, where it has like the acoustic part. The acoustic sounds really warm and really, really nice. Um, there's a good presence in the vocal. So it's kind of hit or miss with this particular pressing. Um, I, as far as it being, um, it's nice to have a clean uh, copy of this, that's for sure. Finding a clean vintage pressing of Led Zeppelin 1 is very, very hard to do these days. Especially if you're trying to get like, um, there's a really uh, sought after German pressing of this album I know. Uh, I have a friend who's a big Led Zeppelin collector. and he, He's played me a bunch of really amazing pressings, uh, vintage pressings of Led Zeppelin. He played me a German uh, pressing, I think it's from like the mid 70s, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, so there's some great, great pressings of this album out there. Uh, this isn't one of them, in my opinion. Next up is Led Zeppelin 2. And much like uh, Led Zeppelin 1, 
this particular pressing suffers again from distortion, uh, especially in the high end. Uh, also, uh, kind of overdone low end as well. The bass is just a little bit bloated is what I would say. Uh, I have some very, very nice pressings of this, uh, US pressings that I like a lot um, that are uh, just light years better than this. Uh, they just sound so much more present is what I would say. Um, they have so much more depth to them. Uh, that being said, though, of course, if you're new to Led Zeppelin and this is this is an album that you own in your collection, this is maybe the first Led Zeppelin album you own, it's not horrible in any way, uh, but there are just better, better pressings out there. Um, and a lot of the U.S. pressings from the 1970s are still readily available. Um, of course, there's the famous um, uh, Loud Cut done by uh, Robert Ludwig. Uh, I do not own one of those, but I would like to own one of those someday. Uh, I have heard uh, a couple of those uh, from different friends who have them, and uh, they are very, very cool cool to listen to. Um, if you're looking to take Led Zeppelin II to the next level when it comes to uh, a vinyl pressing, this is not the pressing for you. If you're just getting into the band, this is probably fine for you for now. That's how I would describe it. Next up, Led Zeppelin III. This is one of the highlights of these remasters. In my opinion, um, this is one of, one of the best uh, pressings that they, they did. Um, this one happens to be made in Germany. I'm not sure about the other ones, but this one is made in Germany. This is one of the newer ones I picked up. So I'm not sure if this is like a repress, uh, pro probably is, um, but it sounds really good. Now I have a couple of different vintage pressings of Led Zeppelin III. I have an original American pressing, um, I have a French pressing, all from, are from the 70s, uh, early 70s, uh, and they all just kind of lack, um, they lack just a presence is what I would say. Um, and Let's Up in 3 is notorious for not sounding perfect on vinyl. Um, this I think fixes a lot of the problems that at least I have with my particular pressings in my collection. Uh, there's a nice presence to this. The acoustic guitars sound really, really good. Um, there's, it's just a really, really, um, it's a welcome, welcomed addition to my collection. So I highly, highly recommend Let's Open 3, uh, this remastered version. And of course it has a gatefold. And I, I think I forgot to show the record of Let's Open 2, but it looks just like one and three I'm showing you right now. So yes, I I really think Let's Up in Three, this remaster, it's really, really nice. Um, so if you're on the fence about picking this one up, highly recommend it. Okay, probably Led Zeppelin's most famous album, Led Zeppelin IV. Um, this one happens to be the, uh, the two LP edition. So you get some of the bonus tracks on here and it has a pretty cool uh, tri-fold, gatefold sleeve, which is very, very cool. This one uh, has problems, uh, for me at least. Um, if you own uh, a US pressing of this album, I have owned a bunch of US pressings of this album um, with uh, Peko uh, Dunn in the Dead Wax, if you know what I'm talking about. I think it's Peko, I think that's how it's pronounced, or maybe it's Pico, I think it's Peko Dunn, and then uh, Duck is also in there. Uh, if that's in your Dead Wax, that's an amazing sounding pressing. Uh, I have a couple of those, they sound so present, they are some of the best sounding records I own in my, my collection as far as rock music goes. This is nowhere near that. Um, it's lacking uh, presence, it's lacking a depth, it's lacking a warmth. Uh, there's just a lot, it just sounds kind of dull to me, unfortunately. And these are not dull songs. They're just some of the best songs ever. You got Stairway to Heaven on here. Uh, you got Rock and Roll, uh, Black Dog. Just, just brilliant, brilliant songs. And just dynamic songs like Oh, When the Levee Breaks. Just such a heavy, heavy song. Um, on here, When the Levee Breaks is just such a disappointment for me. Um, it, it just, it distorts at times. Uh, it just seems very, very flat. Uh, and that's just really too bad because this is an amazing album with amazing, amazing music on it. Uh, but this remaster just falls short for me. 
I should say the bonus material on here, also, it's kind of, it, it's nothing special is what I would say. Um, it's all just like alternate mixes, really, um, of the songs, and they're not really that different from the versions that we're all used to. So I listened to like the bonus disc on here maybe one time. Um, so nothing to write home about is what I would say. Next up, uh, Houses of the Holy. This one uh, has problems as well. Uh, the high end on here is just really shrill um, and it's, it just doesn't do it for me. Now that being said, I have a, a lot of uh, Robert Ludwig pressings of this from the 1970s, US pressings, that also, or actually I think that's, they're Sterling pressings, I should say, sorry, I think I misspoke there, uh, Sterling pressings, and they are not great either, but they're better than this. Um, this album's always had kind of like a high-end issue, I think is what I would say. Um, it just is kind of thin at times and a little bit shrill, and that is true for this remaster as well. Um, I'll show the gatefold just because it's always very, very cool. And again, the record, if you care to see it, looks like this. And again, I'm being very critical of the these particular pressings, but I love these albums. I love all the Let's Up on albums, I love all the songs. Uh, I'm not being critical of the music, I'm being critical of these particular pressings. So I always want to clear that up, because I know a lot of times, even in some of my Beatle videos, I'll be kind of negative about certain aspects, and I think people might misunderstand that sometimes as me criticizing the band or the music, but I'm, I'm never doing that. I'm just talking about the press, pressings in general. Next up, Physical Graffiti. This is another highlight for me. This one sounds really, really good. Now, I don't know if that's because uh, the pressings that I have in my collection, I have a couple of US pressings, um, and they're not in the best condition. So it was nice for me to pick this up, to have this album in just pristine condition. The, the, uh, the vinyl uh, pressing of this one, it's very, very clean. The vinyl is uh, uh, pretty, pretty quiet, which I was happy about. No skips, no problems like that. Um, and the overall sound is really, really nice. Uh, this is one of my favorite Led Zeppelin albums. It's hard for me to pick if I had to pick a favorite, uh, but this is definitely up there with one of my favorites. Uh, it's a double album, of course. Uh, has so many excellent, excellent songs, a lot of very, very long songs. Um, and on this particular pressing, they sound really, really good. Um, again, I, I have never heard, uh, there are a lot of, there's like a, the original UK pressings that I know are, are considered really, really nice. There's a, I think there's like a German pressing out there of this that's considered really, really good. Haven't heard those. So I'm just comparing this to my original US pressings. But compared to those, I really, really like this one a lot. So this was a highlight for me as well. And another highlight, and possibly the best sounding of all these remasters for me. This is Led, Zepp Led Zeppelin's album, Presence. Uh, this is an album that I think it's overlooked. I love this album. Uh, it's such a unique sounding Led Zeppelin album. Um, and this one, this particular pressing, this remaster is excellent. Uh, it's so in your face, um, has just a lot of great, great things going for it. The vocals sound so nice and crystal clear. Uh, just a total, total highlight from these remasters for me. Um, and there's the gatefold, of course, in the back. And the record itself is on the Swan Song label. And this is just excellent. And again, this particular pressing is just pristine. The vinyl is quiet, no skips or anything like that. So I was very, very happy with this one. Um, and I do own an original US pressing of this one as well. And this completely destroys the US pressing that I have. So I was very, very happy with this album, with this particular pressing, this of presents. Next up, another highlight. Uh, this is In Through the Outdoor. Comes with this, how they originally were packaged with the uh, brown paper bag. And this sounds great. Um, 
This, in my opinion, I've heard a bunch of different US pressings of this. They all, none of them sounded all that great to me. Uh, I've always been kind of disappointed in this album. When I got this remaster, it was, it felt like I was finally hearing this album the proper way for the very first time. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful sounding pressing, uh, and I cannot recommend it enough. Um, and this is another Led Zeppelin album that I think kind of gets overlooked. Uh, it's got just great, great songs, great performances, and of course it is the last Led Zeppelin album that was released uh, while John Bonham was, was still alive. So it's always been one of my favorites, and this repress really hit it out of the park, in my opinion. So another one that I highly, highly recommend. I'm keeping it in this uh, cardboard or this uh, brown paper bag because that's how it was how it was released and it's kind of cool to have it. I think it looks kind of cool on the shelf in the, the paper bag, but I know a lot of people just throw this out, but that's In Through the Outdoor. Last but not least, this is Coda. Again, this one happens to be a triple album. It has a very, very cool gatefold. And this sounds good as well. Um, I own an original pressing of Coda, which is just a single disc, and that sounds fine as well to US pressing. This, I think, uh, is equal to that, if not a little bit better. And the bonus material on here is really, really great. So for Coda, this one's another highlight of the collection. Um, and I would recommend getting this triple uh, LP edition of it if you can. Uh, it's, like I said, the bonus tracks are great. And the overall sound quality on this is really, really nice. So those are all of the 2014 remasters for the Led Zeppelin albums. And if you're wondering if you should pick up all of these together, um, I would say yes and no. Yes, if you're new to collecting vinyl, you like Led Zeppelin and you want to get all their albums um, for uh, an affordable price, but you want to have clean minty copies, then yes, I would recommend picking all these up. They're not horrible in any way. Yes, there are some of these albums have some problems like distortion and uh, a little bit of over, over, overdone low end, but really, if you're new to vinyl and you're new to Led Zeppelin, that's passable if you're, if you're new to it. If you are uh, a seasoned collector, you have a bunch of their, of their albums in your collection already, uh, vintage pressings from the 70s. Um, some of these are not going to be uh, pleasing to you, is what I would say. Um, and if if you had, if you really have not picked these up yet, and you wanted to just get one to see what they're like, I would highly recommend first picking up either Presence or Led Zeppelin Three. I think these two um, really, really shine, uh, and they really um, are an improvement over at least the pressings I have in my collection. So they would probably also be an improvement over the ones maybe you have in your collection as well. If you're like me, if you're a big fan of Led Zeppelin, but you're not like a, a super fan. Now, if you're a super fan of Led Zeppelin, I would say that these remasters are not for you. Uh, because you probably already have all the best pressings of these albums in your collection. Uh, and these, I don't think any of these are going to beat any of those. Um, it's a shame that Led Zeppelin, uh, in my opinion, they haven't got it right yet as far as the, the, the vinyl um, remasters. The Beatles, of course, put out the Beatles in mono, which was amazing, all analog cut. That's what Led Zeppelin needs. They need Led Zeppelin all analog cut in a box set. It would sell out immediately. I would, buy, I would buy that box. I know tons of you would as well. Um, that's what needs to happen. Until that happens, some of these are very, very nice and worth adding to your collection. Uh, so that's what I think of the 2014 uh, Led Zeppelin remasters. I'd love to know in the comments below what you think. Uh, and if you are aware of some amazing pressings of these albums, please let me know in the comments below. I love reading the comments. I love learning from you guys 
Um, there have been just so many amazing um, bits of information that people have posted in the comments that lead me to pick, picking up different pressings of certain albums by the Beatles or whoever. Uh, and uh, I'm always very, very appreciative of that. So keep the comments coming. Uh, so that's it for now. Hope you're all doing well. Take care and bye for now.